All right, so we've got this thing that's moving on an x-axis, right? So uh, here are the things we know. We know the mass of the thing is 2 kilograms. We know that the force acting on it as a function of x is negative 6x. Uh, the velocity, so when x equals 3, uh, the velocity is 8. Cool? And so question A wants to know at x equals 4, what's the velocity? So everybody good with that? All right, so uh, thoughts, you guys? What's the, the process? Sure, what do you guys ask? Uh, I just made an integral from 3 to 4 and okay. used that to find work. Yeah, so remember, you guys, the work done by a force is the integral of that force with respect to x, right? OK, so help me out. Why does finding the work help us? Like, what's the connection between the work and this velocity here? Sure, Seba. OK, good. Yeah, your work is equal. Well, the work done by your net force is equal to your change in kinetic energy. So this work that I'm finding here is do you guys agree that that's the network or the net force? I, I think I said that wrong, but this is the only force, right? Yeah. Therefore, that's going to be my net force, and this is also my network. So that's going to be my change in kinetic energy. All right, so let's integrate it. So we want to integrate between 3 and 4, Plus one. negative 6x dx. Oops. All right, so uh, first of all, integral of negative 6x. What do we got? Negative 3x squared. Negative 3x squared, right? Let's check. If you take the derivative of that, does it give us what we started with? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do I need to worry about a plus c? No. No, because it's a definite, definite integral. So I'm going to evaluate it at 3, evaluate it at 4, and then subtract. So I'm looking at negative 48 minus negative 27. Good. So what's that give you, 21? Uh, yeah, negative 21. Right. Why is it a definite versus indefinite? Say that again, sorry. Definite versus indefinite. Uh, what's your question? Like, why is it one, or what's the difference? What's the difference? So definite means that you know the end point of integration. Exactly. Yeah, thanks, Joe. Uh, yeah, Josh. I guess my question with this problem is why you can't just divide your your force by your mass to get the acceleration, and then integrate your acceleration to get velocity and take an indefinite integral. You totally could do that. I did that like four times, and I kept getting a different answer. Um, oh no, you couldn't. I'm I'm wrong. Ooh ooh ooh! Really good question. Josh just asked a good question. I don't mean that like surprise. I just mean like <laughs> I want to share this with everybody. All right. So I tell you what, let me finish doing what I'm doing, and then let me show you why what you did didn't work, because it's a really, really common mistake. And especially when we get to impulse, it's going to be a big thing. All right, so what does this negative 21 joules represent, you guys? Change in kinetic energy, right? So that means we lost, because it's negative, we lost 21 joules of kinetic energy. All right, so now we've got to figure out, well, you guys tell me, what should I figure out? How much did I start with, right? Yeah. So our kinetic energy initially is 1 half the mass, wasn't the mass 2, yeah. times the velocity squared. So that's going to give us 64 joules. Lose 21. So that means that my Ke final is, what, 40, 43 joules? Yeah. And now you can solve for velocity, right? Everybody cool with that? Do I need to say more about that? So do Chayon. OK, cool. So let me talk about what Josh did, because I've seen people make this mistake before on tests, too. Um, I feel like most commonly it comes up in the impulse and momentum chapter, but it is worth discussing now. All right, so let's talk calculus for a second. Uh, what's the connection, in terms of calculus, What's the connection between position, velocity, and acceleration? Derivatives, right? So the acceleration is the derivative of velocity, right? Is my notation cool? Sure, yeah. 
With respect to time, it's dt. Velocity is dx dt, right? But notice these derivatives are with respect to time, right? You're measuring, this is measuring how quickly your position changes per second, right? So what Josh did, I love where his head was at. He was thinking, oh, right on. I know that force is negative 6x. Oh, well, then acceleration is divide by mass, and you get negative 3x. And so he thought, oh, great. Well, I'll just integrate to get from acceleration back to velocity, right? But when you, when you go the other way, uh, <laughs> Sorry. Velocity is the integral of acceleration d t. And he integrated dx. Gotcha. OK. Yeah, so that's a really important thing to make sure that you're aware of, you guys, is what, that, what the derivative or integral is with respect to. All right, good? You good? Yeah. All right. Um, so B, do we need to do B? Yes. Yes? OK. All right. Um, so B says, that what positive value of x will the body have a velocity of 5 meters a second? So here's what we know. So for part B, we know that at x equals 3, the velocity is 8. And now we want to know at x equals what, velocity equals 5, right? So notice how this is different from part A. All right, in part A, we gave you x and asked you for the velocity. This is the other way around. This time we're giving you the velocity and asking you for x. All right, but regardless, the connection is the integral of f with respect to x tells us the change in kinetic energy, right? So let's find our change in kinetic energy. This kinetic energy ends up being 64 joules. This kinetic energy ends up being 25 joules. Follow? So that means that our change in kinetic energy is just the difference between those, which is what, 39? Uh, and it does have to be negative because we're losing energy. Follow? All right, so I'm about to do some, I don't think we've seen calc like this in this class yet. I'm guessing you've probably done this in BC by now. Any problem before I go ahead? All right, so what we did last time was this. We said, all right, well, we know that the work is the integral of f dx, right? And we knew, don't write this down, just listen for a minute. We knew that our starting integral was at 3, our starting bound was at 3, and our ending bound was at 4, right? This time, we're trying to find our ending bound, right? We want to integrate between 3 and something. Does that make sense? So let's give that something a name. Let's call it xf, as in final position. Does this make sense? All right, and so now we can set up our integral. So our change in kinetic energy is negative 39 joules. That has to equal the integral from 3 to something of negative 6x dx. Yep. Can you take the integral of force here and get work? That's exactly what I'm doing. Okay. That's, what, that's what this is. This is force. So that doesn't have to do with time. It's just the velocity position the acceleration. Correct. Yeah, so at this point, we've, is this true? I think the only calculus -y equations we've learned so far are the acceleration velocity position relationship. Okay. And now this one between work and force, which is that uh, 
force is the derivative of work with respect to time, and work is, no, shoot, I just did the thing I was trying to teach you not to do, with respect to x, uh, and work is the integral of f with respect to x. Oh, and power, thank you. So power is uh, the derivative of work. That one's with respect to time. Oh. So the only one with respect to time. The, the only one with respect to x is the work force relation. If it's with respect to time, then you can't do it. Say that again? If it's with respect to time, then you can't do it. Then you either need to use some advanced okay. algebra or calculus or something. I think number four is like that. A little bit. But okay. if they give you f of t, can you just find the acceleration? Yeah. 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 So that's an important thing, you guys. I'm glad we're having this conversation right now because, and I think Josh's question really hit the nail on the head, and I think that's kind of what Dan is saying, is that if it's in terms of time, that might be a good indication that you just use the old kinematics equations, right? But if it's in terms of position, that's when you want to think in terms of work and energy. Does that make sense, you guys? Yeah. I feel like that's important enough that I'm going to say it again, and maybe you should write it down if you zoned out. Okay? If you're given a function in terms of time, then that's probably a safe bet that you can think in terms of the kinematics equations, acceleration, velocity, and time, uh, position. And then we'll learn later on maybe impulse. All right? Um, but if you're given a function in terms of position, that's telling you this has something to do with work and energy. Good? All right. So does everybody kind of see how this, the calculus here is going to work? It's, this is a little bit weird because we're looking for this upper bound, right? OK, but don't, I mean, you're still just going to take an, I say just, and I, I know that's, I don't mean that to sound bad, but you're just going to take an integral. So you get negative 39 equals, the integral of this thing is, what did we decide? Negative 3x squared, right? And then we want to evaluate it between x and, no, sorry, between 3 and some final x, right? Okay, so think about what this means. This is negative 39 equals, so I want to evaluate it xf, so negative 3 times xf squared minus negative 3 times 3 squared. Follow you guys or no? Yeah. All right, so uh, what are we going to get? Let's see, so you get negative 39 equals negative 3 times x final squared plus 27. So subtract 27 from both sides, and you get a uh, number that I, what is that, negative 66 equals negative 3 times xf squared. Divide algebra, and you'll find your xf square to 22, whatever that is, 4.7. I remember the answer if it helps any. That wasn't me just doing square roots in my head. All right. Everybody good? OK, cool. Uh, to me, this is like, in terms of the calculus -y stuff that you should know how to do for the test, this is totally on target. Like, to me, this is a pretty reasonable problem. Okay. And I would say same thing for, you know, like this is, I think, I could see a similar style problem being an AP problem on the FRQs. All right, are we good? Yep. All right, um, what else? What other ones do we want to talk about? Was seven important? I don't know. I've been trying really hard as much as I can to, to weed out the ones that I think are less important. And yeah, this is one, yes, we should, we should do this one if there are questions on it, for sure.